mind saturated brain, and we're here with the uh, shaman uh, from Toronto. Uh, why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Um, I'm Rob. I play drums. And I'm Peter. I play guitar and I sing. Uh, why don't you uh, tell us about the beginning of Shaman? When did it start? How did it start? Why did it start? What did it sound like? Um, well, why did it start? It started because we were mostly sick of finding bass players and we were like, let's just do this ourselves because it's, I don't know, it's easier and we're twins so we got that vibe, I guess. Um, it started in Ottawa, probably 2000 or something in our basement in Westboro. Oh no, no, it was in 2000. I don't know. I don't know years. Like, when, when, where are we? 2017 almost? <laughs> it was like 2012? 2012, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was the year of 2012. I guess I was like getting out of high school in 2008. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. We just uh, had a lot of creative energy that we needed to get out and waiting around for other people to do that and working with other people just wasn't like I guess realistic at that time we didn't really know many people in Ottawa um, yeah I guess at the beginning it was kind of just we had no idea like what we were doing we were trying to like compensate for lack of bass so like, there was some weird tones happening weird pedals oh, we was not, when, we, when we started showing them we decided that we didn't want to compensate for the bass though we didn't want to play a specific way or like you know I would play, you know, bassier notes or whatever, right? It was basically like, let's just do it and like, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know, is what it is. But there was some fear that we, that we had to fill it out. So like fear, a yeah, yeah. There was definitely fear. Fill it in with something. For sure, but not yeah. I think that's why, like, when we first started playing, it was like, if people think it's obnoxiously loud now, it was like, beyond obnoxiously loud. Uh, it was like, really bad. I mean, in a good way. Bleeding ears loud. So we kind of like, but I feel like now, once we got more comfortable with the idea and we kind of grew into what we are now, it kind of just it's just become quieter and just. But we also didn't know how to write as a two piece, so it was very dynamic. It was very much like soft, loud kind of stuff. It was really like I don't know. But you switched guitars, didn't you, for the part yeah. of the set? Was that for sh the soft, loud dynamic generally? I no, thought... that's just like a tuning thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> basically. I thought maybe your hard stuff was all in a specific tune. No. Yeah. No, I don't know. No, it's just tuning. It spans a quarter playing music, three quarters tuning. <laughs> <laughs> so you started in Ottawa. I did. I was not aware of this. Uh, when and why did you come out to Toronto? We, uh, we came to Toronto uh, November twenty thirteen. I think it was November twenty thirteen. Um, why did we go to Toronto? I think just because most of our friends were here, we needed a change. We hated Ottawa. Yeah. Ottawa is probably like the worst place to be in Canada. Well, you don't want a core band. Don't, yeah, maybe. Like, you don't want to generalize because there's a lot of cool stuff. Oh, yeah. Like a great history in Ottawa, especially like post hardcore history there with Okara, Shotmaker, Buried Inside, like Sleeping Pilot, all those old bands. Like, there's a very rich history there, so I don't really want to. There wasn't a Shit scene for us. There was a scene for yeah. us in Toronto. There was no scene for us in Ottawa. It was a lot of garage kind of stuff happening. There was a really good basement scene that we were a part of, but it kind of slowly fizzled out. And we just needed a change. We were in Ottawa for five years. My partner had finished school. Um, you know, we'd been do we'd gone through like a bunch of family stuff that was kind of rough. We just needed like a fresh start, and Toronto was that fresh start. So yeah. Seemed like the natural thing to do. Why the name Sean? Honestly, it that's a funny thing that we've been kind of has been on our minds for quite some time now. I feel like in a lot of ways we kind of became the name. Like the name was really somewhat um, how would you say that? Again? Really prophetic. Prophetic, I guess, in a way. Um, but when we chose it, we didn't really have anything totally spiritually driven in mind. I don't know, I disagree. For me it was. I mean, Rob, was, Rob has a different take on it. We both have our completely like different opinions on it. I mean, I, I feel like, I mean, the name itself is just like in the meaning of shaman. It's someone that bridges the gap between, you know, the spirit world and the real world. And it's basically an act to heal people. To me, um, music represents a, a human ritual that predates 
history, and it's something that we've all been a part of from the beginning. And so that's how I feel about music, and I always have that it, it is it has a healing force and it has a has a way to bring us all together under the same roof. And it's beyond it transcends politics. It transcends any anything you have you know in your life. Um, and that's what I want to do with music, and that's what I feel like I do with music. So it made sense to call the band Shaman. Yeah, it's not like there's no there's yeah no particular reference or anything to anything else. It's literally by definition. It's, yeah, that's what it means to me, and like that's kind of also, yeah, the way I think about um, a lot of other things in my life, like spirituality and religion and things. I, I'm very much against orthodox religion and organized religions. I feel like it's all, you know, up to the individual, it should be up to the individual, and that's why the name Sean was appealing to me. It was something that kind of predated all of these, um, all of these... But in an odd way, it was prophetic because it was prior to a lot of this thinking, you know. Yeah, we grew into the name, I think. Yeah, and the music grew into it too, and yeah. So. Yeah. Well, how I was gonna that was the next question. How has your music uh, changed, evolved, however you want to call it, over the years? How has it evolved? <laughs> I think it's evolved like how I have evolved as a human being in a way. Like, I know that sounds super fucking pretentious, but, like, I feel like at some point in my life, which I could pinpoint, but that's personal, like, I feel like I had some sort of, like, spiritual awakening, and I needed a way to express that, and I picked up a guitar, and I wrote a whole album, you know? Yeah, well, because that's what music has been for us. Like, music has always really kind of told our story as, like, brothers and as, like, individuals. So, like, yeah, when Peter says, like, when, you know, some bad things happen in our life, or when something great happens in our life, bad happens in our life, we always turn towards music to tell that, to that, tell that story, to share it, or to heal, or anything else. So, like, I think just the way it's, our music's evolved with us, like, everything we've experienced, like, um, the shapes and forms the music. So, it, I think we, like, we had some turbulent years, and so the music became, um, I guess a little more like, yeah, I don't know, it just kind of like paralleled that or something, like, I don't know, I, I, I mean, Demise of a, of a Body was a record about our mother um, who passed away, so, like, clearly, again, that just proves, like, you know, how we use the music to kind of, like, tell those stories, and the new record is, again, a continuation of that record, and so it's always, like, every record you hear of Sean, it's just a continuation of the net, like, of the, of the last, mm -hmm. like, even, even conceptually, I, like, I know it's, like, it's weird, and I, like it's hard for people to understand just listening to it. But like, yeah, it's to me, it's just a straight. You said too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every single record is like one record. I think just in different times. I have some people today ask me what a shaman sound like. It's just like, <laughs> when are we talking about? I guess because <laughs> they used to be heavy, you know. Yeah. And like I would, I, I considered you like a heavy, like old, almost like old man, gloomy but sludgy. You know, like post metal band, I guess. But you've really changed over time, from what I can hear, to some kind of a post whatever you used to be. Maybe like you're like I don't know. It's like a post rock thing or post hardcore thing to me now. It's very atmospheric and there's a lot of like mood to it. And I felt like before it was like the noise and like the heaviness factor that really got to me. And now it's changed your dynamic. But they both they both hook me in different ways. But Equally, it's an equal pull, I guess. Yes. Well, we, it's oddly like connected to our psychological state. I think like, it's like whatever we're feeling or whatever's happening in our lives, that's how we're gonna sound. Yeah. It's like the only way I can explain it because the older stuff, like I don't really listen to a lot of heavy stuff, never really have, but that's just kind of what it, what we were doing, and I don't know. Yeah, it's it's really weird. We never sat down with the record and like this is the way it's gonna sound. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Really happens that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, yeah. good. Yeah. yeah.
Leading into 2016, you released uh, your new album. Why don't you tell us about that? You had the release show just a couple months ago. Oh, yes. Uh, tell you about the record, huh? Okay. Uh, it's a record we were working on for a while, I guess, like maybe like a year or so or more. We've never taken that long to write and record a record, but this time we wanted to kind of like hash things out a little more and, you know, make things all sound. Precise. Was it easier or more difficult to write because of that? It was more difficult because we were being a little more um, choosy, yeah. I guess. And also, like, the music was different. Like, I don't know. Like, the songs were different. They just seemed to, like, demand more attention or something than the last stuff, which was, like, it's a lot more refined. Yeah, I don't know. We wanted to tweak stuff down. And, like, there's also, like, 15 songs, so, like, it took a while to... Get everything going. I don't know. Write lyrics. We just want to take our time. Yeah. End of end of story. And What's we're like touring a lot and we're doing that. that. Like it's really hard to write because we're always you know away doing something. So it's a very fractured writing process, yeah, which makes it longer. What are the lyrics about on the new album? Uh, uh, well, uh, okay. I mean, I'll start. I guess Peter and I. Well, normally like. I've written a lot of record, or a lot of lyrics for Shaman up until like demise, whereas Peter like kind of started um, lending some some writing to that. So this time around, we wanted to like, do the same thing and conceptually, uh, oh God, how do we, where do we start here? I mean, it's it's a it's a simple it's a simple answer conceptually. Like there is a, like a, a like the album is really just based on meditations of past moments in our lives, basically. Mm -hmm. A lot of it was just, you know, sitting down and just like having it spill out of you, and a lot of it was like a like a thoughtful yeah. process of going back to certain times and like wanting to turn that into a song or something. I think. Yeah, we were like seriously like spiritually uprooted from like the last record and the passing of our mom and stuff, and it really felt like a new like we started a new life in a way. I mean, like our family isn't a big one, so like when we lost our mother, it was just like a huge, you know, gap in the family structure, and you know, it was all about like, returning to those memories to kind of say goodbye, but also, you know, find some, you know, peace in that as well. So it was just all about, yeah, being present and, and looking back on a past that we knew was ending, essentially, you know, um, figuratively, literally. Um, and just kind of like being able to start fresh, you know, because when you leave all that stuff behind once and for all, it's like you can actually, you know, start fresh again musically and um, conceptually and just, yeah, spiritually speaking. It's an important thing to do. Have you written anything since the album? Yeah, we've, we've, we've written, written an entire new album. That was yeah. fast. Well, yeah, this is <laughs> like, yeah, Fragments was like, it's, I don't know, it took a while to get out and to record, so Peter and I are like fast, like whenever we finish something it's generally like we're going into something else. We always like, we're always one step ahead or something. Uh, we don't like just sitting on stuff for too long, it's kind of boring. Um, does the new stuff feel like a fresh start then, like you were saying? It's, it does to us. I mean, it's not like going to be this wild departure, you know, but in a lot of ways it's it is a, it is a, I mean, I mean, well, ideally, uh, ideally it is a, it's a, it is a huge departure because we were talking about like at the end of Fragments, like, I felt that like, the topic that we've been writing on and like, you know, the con concepts that we've been working with for years, I felt like it was almost like ending. And a lot of the new stuff I was thinking of like what we'd write about and what we'd be talking about and it just seemed like, I was just kind of returning the same stuff and I didn't want to, I didn't want to keep talking about the same things in my lyrics, I didn't want to keep like, you know, uh, talking about what we've been through and, and all this. So we really felt like Fragments was kind of like the end in a lot of ways to like Shaman conceptually and almost like literally I'd say. So the new stuff we've decided to even like kind of branch out from Shaman and start like a new project in a way. It's almost like a second skin. So like a continuation of Shaman with like a different name and everything. So yeah, it's kind of like I'd say the end of this um, form of Shaman. Oh, okay. So you're not going to go by Shaman anymore? 
in the and when might this take effect when the new album comes out? It it would be yeah. Okay. I mean, when we were trying to choose a, a new name, like we didn't want to just like make it appear like we're becoming like a new band or something. Like this is like very much going to be a continuation of that. Like, like I said, like I feel like the name Shaman and that project in general kind of I don't know it it did what it had to do. It served its purpose and to really start fresh. You know, and to start experimenting again with like ideas and music, we needed like to really overhaul everything. So like, yeah, that's why we came up with the concept of like creating like a second skin or something, which is just like, yeah, I guess. I don't know. think I wouldn't say it's entirely like, oh, we're we're changing our band name. We're just kind of coming up with a cool way of doing it. It kind of just does truly feel like, yeah, a fresh skin of sorts. And also, we don't want to kill. Shaman either. Right. It's not done. We don't know when it will resurface, but it's just not done. Or maybe like the next project will eventually meet its match. Still you two? Yeah. And then, okay, so there's no additional members. No, no, no. Different no, stuff. No. It yeah, just made no, sense. No. Like our music was changing a lot. Um, conceptually, we wanted to start writing about new things. Everything was like, crum like our van was like crumbling. Our tours were like coming to an end. Our you know, we, we had all this new stuff in our life, like Peter's getting married, um, we have like the label where we started doing, like there's just so many fresh starts that like, this kind of just, it felt like the right thing to do, so yeah, we just, you know, just kind of continue Shaman under a different name and with a different direction, and instead of just like, yeah. So what about, um, I have to ask about to the tours, uh, mostly because I saw that video <laughs> of you guys playing under a bridge in oh, like, no, Baltimore no. or whatever it was and just thinking this is the most surreal and your music is the perfect music <laughs> to play under a bridge while it's raining. It was it, <laughs> it was magical. Like really the final song that we played, it had started to rain. So when the music had ended, I like I look up and there's these these pipes that would you know, um, drain. drain water from the bridge, and I look up, and it's all this like the symmetry, this perfect symmetry of looking across this bridge because we were perfectly underneath it, and there were four pipes, and each were just flowing waterfalls. Yeah. It was and the vibe was, was just surreal. so good. Like everyone was, it wasn't a huge amount of people, but everybody that was there, you know, wanted to be there, and wanted to experience something interesting and new, and we like opened up for a bunch of people just reading poetry. So like, it was a totally entirely different feel to begin with. It felt so also just like so honest like place for us to present our music too because I feel like a lot of my inspiration comes from nature oh, I have the lyrics and, right you know like everything else so it just felt right to be you know performing in the like in our element it felt so nice it felt a natural perfect. venue yeah no, absolutely. I yeah. hate bars I hate like basements and, and DIY spaces are awesome but like bars especially are just like it's just we, we play these spaces sometimes, these different spaces, and it just doesn't feel like the right environment and atmosphere for us and our music, and it just it kind of comes off on us too. So like playing that show, that was so perfect. Yeah, I don't think it'll happen all the time, but it would be fantastic <laughs> if we could do something. Like yeah, that. it was awesome. <laughs> Bridge tour 2017. Oh yeah, <laughs> only book under bridges. <laughs> Be some interesting characters under there. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> um, okay. Um, we're almost finished here. Uh, you guys moved out to Toronto. You said in 2013. Um, just wondering if you want to say anything about the scene there. Um, bands, um, people, whatever. I mean, whoever's listening probably knows a bit about it. It's always changing, you know. Like any scene, it's transient, up and down. But I always just feel like there's a solid group of people keeping it going. Yeah, somehow people have always, there's been like at least a few, even if, you know, half the people hate us, whatever, or think we're weird and don't belong to a, a, you know, scrams or hardcore scene. There's always been a couple people that kind of like, have like taken us under the wing and given us good shows and showed their support. And like, I'm grateful for that because it's really hard with this band to like, find a scene or something that fits. Um, You're evolving and changing. Up yeah, yeah, it's like tough and it's kind of intimidating sometimes going into like types of shows and being that odd man out all the time. Um, but yeah, I don't know, there's amazing bands that we know and you know, still playing music, playing music. Um, yeah, I think at this point in time for us, it's, Toronto's never really been like, you know, 
our main focus. It's always been kind of a home base, and it's just always been great to know that we have a solid group of friends there that are just amazing musicians and an amazing bands and that we can play with and great people doing great things. And it's 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 interesting too because I see a lot of like a lot of the hardcore scene in Toronto right now has actually you know uh, died down a bit, but you see a lot of new acts coming up and like we're in the works and a lot of I see a lot more. Uh, Younger people in the crowds. I think you're in transition period. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like, cautiously optimistic about the future. I'm optimistic. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 I'm just an old jaded. Music. Yeah, it's foolish to think that like you know this hasn't happened once before. And it, so anyway, I'm confident in everybody and like the music that's gonna come out of Toronto. And, you know, it's just, it's gonna be phenomenal. Right? So even if no one's there to watch it, it's gonna be awesome. It will always be great. <laughs> So uh, let's wrap this up. Um, what, uh, what else would you like to discuss? Anything, whether it be the future of something here uh, or politics oh. or whatever? We have a record label called Art of the Uncarved Block in Toronto. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty fresh. It's a baby. Um, hopefully, people can check that out. Check out our releases because that's the most important thing to see and to hear. Uh, and hopefully in the future, it will be a very great thing. I have somebody say about politics. Oh. <laughs> and it's very much that I'm not going to say anything about politics at all, because I, I do feel like, and I've seen a lot of people being like, you know, now we have to talk about politics, we have to be engaged, this and that, like, we need to, if you're not writing about politics, you're not doing anything, you know, you need to, like, contribute to the political canon within punk and music. And I, I do agree with that to some extent that, you know, right now in this day and age, we need to stay engaged and informed. But at the same time, it's also extremely important and more so than ever to, like, focus on art and music and, you know, create some things that are beautiful, that are, like, exist outside of politics. You know, we need some space from that. Um, you know, and not everything can be just, like, I think you can say more than... Political things. Yeah, yeah, but at the same time, stay engaged and. Uh, totally. But yeah, just like, also just enjoy art, and that's where the power and I don't know beauty in life is. If you don't have good art in your life, or like, you know, any room for like, you know, beauty or, or like love and things, then you're not going to be, you know, you're not going to be very successful in your politics. So, <laughs> gotta keep some hope. Some. Hope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though it's hard. Pipelines, all that. You know. No, know. it's it's tough to stay optimistic, but you have to, or you might as well. Just... Yeah, I do. there's just so many people that are like, there's so many people saying the same things, and like I can't really contribute anything politically, you know, outside of what people have already said or are saying. So like I'm just gonna, you know, keep doing good music. And if Shaman doesn't work out, we'll probably just become like eco Oh, definitely. Or like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure, but yeah. for now it's just part. <laughs> that line's got to be drawn between two extremes. Extreme <laughs> yeah. politics after extreme. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Retire from one, enter into the next. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're not RCMP officer, are you? You can't <laughs> bomb the pipelines until they're built, anyways. <laughs> yeah, and then there you go. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for for talking with me. Um, and uh, yeah, your band's awesome, and can't wait to hear the. Uh, the new material incarnation, whatever you want to call it, skin. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Man.